from the President of the United States. At the request of the government of Lebanon, I have ordered Landing Force 6th Fleet to return to Lebanon as part of the multinational force. I well recognize the requirements and demands that this places upon you, the members of the fleet. I also know the steadfastness and devotion to duty you have displayed throughout the ordeal of this tortured land. The cause of peace and the interests of our nation are being well served by all of you who go down to the sea in ships. Be assured that you have the unending gratitude of all who love freedom. God bless you, Ronald Reagan. With these words from their president, the Marines of the 32nd Marine Amphibious Unit came ashore in Beirut, Lebanon. Like many times before in our history, these Marines went ashore in a dangerous land under difficult circumstances and tenuous security conditions. Several rotations of Marines deployed to Beirut. The Marines conducted patrols and trained their Lebanese counterparts as they strove to keep peace amongst the warring factions. As the months wore on, the mission was increasingly complex. Friction and violence rose in the city. Valor groups to include the Marines of the 31st Mile were stationed offshore. In 1983, extremists struck the first major blows against America, starting this long war on terrorism. Having already destroyed the American Embassy in Beirut in April of that year, the terrorists now unleashed suicidal fanatics on the Marines. On a Sunday morning, October 23rd, a suicide bomber drove his explosive-laden truck into the headquarters of Battalion Landing Team 1-8. It was the single largest non-nuclear explosion on Earth since World War II. The devastation was so total, it seemed incredible at first sight that anyone could have survived. The building collapsed on itself, pancaking the four floors into one another, trapping and killing the sleeping Marines and sailors. Marines dove into recovery efforts. Coalition partners, though similarly rocked by attacks on them that day, joined in. But sadly, 241 Marines and corpsmen perished in the explosion. The names on this wall in Jacksonville, North Carolina, commemorate the hundreds of lives lost to terrorism in Beirut 25 years ago. Their names and the memories of them are etched on our hearts. And they are a part of who we are. Each one of us carries the memory and the fighting spirit of these Marines until today's battles against terrorists. That cowardly act would not be the last time Americans were attacked by extremists bent on creating chaos and destruction. Nearly 10 years later, soldiers of Task Force Ranger landed in the war-torn country of Somalia and attempted to arrest a violent warlord wanted by the United Nations. In what became known as the Battle of Mogadishu, America lost 18 soldiers. In June 1996, using a bomb twice as powerful as the one in Beirut, extremists attacked the Kobar Towers in Saudi Arabia, home to the U.S. Air Force enforcing the no-fly zone in Iraq. Nineteen Americans were killed and hundreds of others were wounded. The American warship, USS Cole, was violently attacked four years later by Al-Qaeda suicide bombers in a small boat. Harbored in the Yemeni port of Aden, the ship's hull was torn apart by the blast taking the lives of 17 members of her crew. Finally, seven years ago, on a crisp September morning, terrorists struck our homeland, killing 3,000 of our countrymen in the Pentagon, the fields of Pennsylvania, and New York City. In this war on extremism, our country has been attacked repeatedly at home and abroad as evidenced by this fragment from the once powerful World Trade Center and the names on our memorials. We've absorbed multiple blows from ruthless killers who take advantage of our free and open society for their own cause. They have indiscriminately killed many Americans in the past 25 years. I'm convinced they would kill millions more if they could. That's the enemy we're up against. But standing between our great nation and this ruthless enemy are young Americans with courage and conviction, United States Marines. 
We are accustomed to rough terrain and even tougher conditions. We have learned to live hard and fight well. Today, we are taking the fight to the enemy in Iraq and here in Afghanistan. Only a few Americans in our history choose the dangerous but necessary work of fighting our nation's enemies. When this chapter of history is written, it will be your story that will be told. It will be a story of a selfless generation of Marines who are willing to stand up and fight for our nation, to defend those who could not defend themselves, to thrive in the hardship and sacrifice expected of an elite warrior class, to march to the sound of the guns, and to ably shoulder the heritage created by those who have gone before. This is the story of our court. As we gather to celebrate the birth of our Corps, we also honor our families. They stand by our side and enable us to do so much for this great nation. Marines, no matter where you commemorate this, our 233rd birthday, know that we're proud of who you are and what you do. You are the heroes of this generation. Happy birthday, Marines. And Semper Fidelis. <laughs>